So here's the theory in a nutshell for finding stationary points, points of concavity, inflection. So the first derivative shows you if the curve is increasing or decreasing. If the first derivative is bigger than zero, it's increasing, less than zero, decreasing. But most importantly for us, if it's equal to zero, then you've got a stationary point. That tangent is parallel to the x-axis. The second derivative informs us of the concavity. So if the second derivative is larger than zero, it's concave up or a minimum. Less than zero, it's concave down or a maximum. And if it's equal to zero and, and you test on either side and the concavity changes, so one is a positive and one's a negative, then there's a point of inflection. If it doesn't change, like that x to the 4 example we were looking at, then there's no point of inflection. And here's a list of what you need to do to sketch any curve. So this is for curve sketching. So let's go through the steps. We find any stationary points by making the first derivative equal zero. We find the second derivative and I'd actually add there, check the concavity, that's not added in this one. So, I'm going to put a point 1a in, find the second derivative, and check concavity. It's a bit of an omission there. Third point which is really now the second point, find any points of inflection by just equating the second derivative to be zero. So if you find that the first derivative, if you get an x value, which makes the first derivative zero and the second derivative zero, you've got a horizontal point of inflection. If you just have the second derivative equal zero, it's not a stationary point, but it's a change in concavity, so something like that. Third point, find intercepts the x-intercept and the y-intercept, you look at the domain and range, you check any asymptotes, limits. You can use symmetry if you know that it's symmetrical or odd or even, and you can even draw up a table of values, but that would probably be your last resort. So let's put all that into practice and sketch this curve here. So the first step is to find the derivative we need both derivatives. So I'm going to do it by the quotient rule. So I'm going to call that u and that v. And you know it's v u dash minus u v dash all over v squared. So that's x minus 2 uh, x minus 2 into 2x minus x squared into 1 all over x minus 2 all squared. So that's 2x squared minus 4x minus x squared over x minus 2 all squared x squared minus 4x over x minus 2 all squared. Now we need to let first derivative equal to 0 to find some stationary points. So 0 equals x squared minus 4x on x minus 2 all squared. If we times both sides by the denominator, we get 0 equals x squared minus 4x. Factorise, that's x minus 4 with x outside. So therefore, two stationary points, x equals 0, or x equals 4. And if we sub in the y values to get the point, uh, y equals 0, or y equals 4 squared over 2, so that's 8. So it's 0, 0, and 4 and 8. Now if we look at the first derivative in this one, y dash x squared minus 4x on x minus 2 all squared. 
Now for my money, I think I'm not going to derive this. I'm going to check the sign of the first derivative around those two stationary points and um, draw up a table. That's to see if they're maximums or minimums. So y dash, x and y dash. So like our old table of values, 0 was 1 and 4 was the other one. So as long as you don't cross over them, you're OK. So I'm going to go minus 1 and 1 and 3, oops, 3 and 5. Okay, so we know there's zero at the stationary points. Then all we've got to do is sub in around the stationary points and see if they're going up or going down, decreasing or increasing. So if I sub in minus one, I get y dash is, it's going to be a one plus four uh, on nine, isn't it? Yep. So that's a plus, that's all I need to know. And if I sub in one, it's 1 minus 4 on 1. That's right. And it's a negative. So that one is increasing, stationary, decreasing. So that's our max. And then if I sub in 3 into the first derivative again, I get 9 minus 12 on 1. It's a negative, which I expect. And then if I sub in 5, hoping to get a positive, unless it's a point of inflection. So if I sub in 5, that's 25 minus 20, which is positive, on 9, which is also positive. So that one is going down, stationary, and going back up. So that's a min. So if I rewrite the original curve, that's y equals x squared on x minus 2. Now let's look at the asymptotes. If x equals 2, the denominator equals 0. So we know x can't be 2. It's a vertical asymptote. And what about the intercepts? If x equals 0, for the y-axis, y equals 0. It's actually our stationary point. And on the next page, I'll do the x-intercept. So to find the x-intercept, you make y equal 0. And if I times both sides by the denominator, I'll get x squared equals 0 or x equals 0. So 0, 0 is both our asymptotes. So there's only one root going through at 0, 0. So let's sketch it here and put in what we know. So we know it's kind of going to be a hyperbola because you've got an x minus 2 as a denominator. We know that there's an asymptote at 2. We also know we've got two stationary points, one at 0, 0 and one at 4 and 8. Let's say it's about there. And so to draw it, we know this 0, 0 is a minimum, sorry, a maximum, oops, but it hugs the asymptote, so it sort of goes away like that, it's a bit of a curve on it, and then we know this one hugs that asymptote, but is a minimum. So it's sort of a little off centre, you could probably put it on... Um, GeoGebra or something to have a, a good look at it. Okay, so that's all the facets of the curve. You could have tested odd or even, but it's not. We could sort of see that being the asymptote at 2. So that equals the limit as x approaches infinity. x squared divided by x is x. x on x is 1. 2 over x is simply that. And now, can we cancel anything out? Well, we can. Change pens. That expression there is going to cancel out. As x gets very, very, very large, or very, very, very small, that's going to tend towards 0. So 
we've got an X on the top, and we've got a 1 on the bottom. So this means that the asymptote is the line Y equals X. So we do have two asymptotes. So that's our first derivative, and we need to let y dash equal 0 to find the stationary points. So 2x minus x squared on x minus 2 equals 0. So if I times both sides by the denominator, it's 2x minus x squared equals 0. x outside of 2 minus x equals, oops, equals 0. So either x equals 0 or x equals 2. Two. We're going to sub it back into the initial equation to find the y values. So if x equals 0, then y equals 0 squared over minus 2, which is 0. That's the first point. And if x equals 2, y equals 2 squared over 0.